Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as I now want to look on the other side of that Commanders-Bengals game from last night. We just talked about how excellent things seem to be headed in Washington as they now have a vision for the upcoming future. On the other end of this game though, it's a little bit of panic time for the Cincinnati Bengals who are 0-3 and are nowhere near where they expected to be when they were entering this season. And I have been a big defender of the Bengals over these past couple years. You know, you can throw out, you know, that injuries are a little bit of an excuse. I can only push back so far. The reality of the situation is Burrow was not healthy last season. Each of the first two years, he has played the entire year. The Bengals have made the AFC Championship game. So, I understand, you know, last year, he's playing through the calf injury early on, and they're not winning games, and now we can look back a year ago, it's, oh, well, Burrow struggles in the beginning of the season. I think there's a little bit more to that, ultimately, but, you know, I think that, Just overall here, looking at this, this was supposed to be the year where the Bengals have sort of one last great chance as the team is currently constructed, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. We sort of have come to an understanding that this is very likely going to be T. Higgins' last season in Cincinnati. He's currently playing on the franchise tag. Did happen to miss the first couple weeks due to a hamstring injury, I'm sure. Part of that was tied into the fact that he didn't want to re-aggravate that injury because there was a very public disagreement with him and the front office for him not being paid more, and he understands he's likely going to hit free agency, and he wants to capitalize on his. Jamar Chase holding out during training camp as well. I mean, these were real red flags that we knew coming into this year. I just kind of figured that the Bengals and Joe Burrow are good enough that they were going to be able to overcome it. And it's not like I'm totally past that point. Maybe I'm a little bit stubborn here. But that being said, 0-3 can be a pretty detrimental hole to fall into, especially when you play in the AFC North. Like This was a game against the Commanders that feels like they had to win. And now this is the second loss so far of the season where they were seven and a half point favorites headed into the game and lost. It was week one against New England, and now this game against the Commanders. And it feels like there's a chance things could fall apart here. I'm going to pump the brakes a little bit, though. I know that there are a lot of red flags with this team, specifically if you look at the defensive side of the ball. I covered this very briefly in the last segment. This idea that Joe Burrow didn't play good enough last night. You're just you're losing me on that one. Over 300 yards and three touchdowns and no turnovers scored on every single drive. You're just not going to sell me that it was the quarterback who wasn't good enough and you know, wins are just not a quarterback stat, in my opinion. Argue me in the comment section if you'd like. But the reality is, you know, that defense has looked pretty bad. It was very bad statistically in the 2023 season. And up to this point, I thought that they made upgrades in the secondary specifically, going out and adding a Von Bell and a Geno Stone in free agency having some of these younger players ideally develop, such as a Dax Hill, but that just hasn't necessarily panned out for them yet. And they're just getting torched at this point. And I would like to think that they can continue to, you know, make steps in the right direction, but that might just be blind optimism at this point. Now, for whatever it's worth, they were without two of their starting defensive linemen in this game and BJ Hill and BJ Hill and Sheldon Rankins. So, that played at least some factor in terms of putting pressure on a young quarterback in Jaden Daniels, but It's not even like the run game was necessarily all that devastating for Washington in this game where you look at the final stats. I mentioned Brian Robinson Jr. in the last segment here, 16 carries for 33 yards. The commanders averaged just 3.4 yards per carry, which isn't bad necessarily, but that's not even the problem issue. It's the fact that they only forced two incompletions from a rookie quarterback and really weren't able to touch him for the majority of the night. 
And I think that there are a lot of things that sort of bake into this. Again, there is some players in that secondary for Cincinnati that are a little bit more on the inexperienced side, but such as a Dax Hill playing for them. But at this point, you know, you have a good amount of solid veterans up and down the roster that I just think it's kind of inexcusable at this point. And you look at, you know, two very different teams that you're game planning wise going from the Chiefs where basically and Lou Anarumo, their defensive coordinator, talked about it, that the entire plan was basically just get the ball out of uh, Patrick Mahomes' hands, which I can definitely understand that. And they did a pretty good job there, but the run defense was bad last week against Kansas City. Isaiah Pacheco was very successful running the ball on them, as we saw the Patriots have a lot of success running on them week one, and that's all the Patriots can do is run. They don't even have a deep threat necessarily. Now, it's not like they got gashed necessarily, but they let themselves get run on. In this game, they take away the run even without their first, you know, their top couple defensive linemen, but you you let a rookie just sort of carve you up on the back end. Like I mentioned, he had something like eight, nine completions of 10 or more air yards. That's just a pretty unacceptable in my opinion. And I feel like the Bengals overall still are a well-coached team. I have a hard time just entirely, you know, discounting them. And I think that from here on out, we can see, you know, it, even if you do have concerns with the offense, which I really don't think you should do, you should at this point, T. Higgins is going to work his way back into it. We saw Jamar Chase really with his first big game of the season, six receptions, 118 yards, and two touchdowns, that I feel like this offense is going to be able to start clicking a little bit more. Now, this was against Washington's defense, which, as we mentioned, is a little bit lackluster of a unit as a whole. But even still, you know, a, a lot of optimism on that offensive side of the ball. That is even with as well, you know, you lose Trent Williams, Trent, uh, not Trent Williams, Trent Brown, excuse me, for the season. That news broke this morning. Trent Brown starting right tackle for them. He went down with a torn patellar tendon. So he's going to be out for the rest of the year. First round rookie Amarius Mims is going to step into that starting right tackle spot, which was eventually the succession plan anyways. But he's dealing with, I believe it was a pec injury during the training camp. So he ended up losing out on the job there. Thought that Mims did fine for himself. He did allow a sack early on there on the first drive of the second half to Javante John Baptiste. But after that, thought that he did a pretty good job overall. That I think their offense is going to be fine. But you just think about what this schedule is coming forward here, where they do have a number of winnable games on their schedules. I would point to the Panthers, Giants, Raiders, Chargers, Titans, and Broncos as six very winnable games for them. And then from there, you're talking about the out-of-division games. They have the Eagles and the Cowboys. I feel like they are a... I still feel like they're a better team than the Cowboys in particular, but you know, I think that they can get one of those games. They're at home against the Eagles on the road against the Cowboys that, again, if you can go one and one there and take mostly care of business in those other six games that I mentioned, you're looking at something like a five and two stretch there. And then it's just about cleaning up in the division. And that's the thing is you're probably going to need a, the Bengals are probably going to need a winning record against divisional opponents. And when you're playing in the AFC North, that is never a given where you, know, you look overall, you know, the Steelers are absolutely punching above their weight class right now. They're 3-0. I do have my reservations about the opponents that they've beaten, but the Steelers have jumped out to a significant lead going on in this year. So they feel like they're absolutely going to be in the mix for a playoff hunt. The Ravens, I think that they did a really good job of sort of reestablishing their identity as a run-first football team. Derrick Henry had a monster performance. So I think the Ravens, I'm back with them. I'm not worried about them. And then 
you know, even the Browns who look like a little bit of a dumpster fire and have for two out of three weeks and even their one win against the Jaguars doesn't feel all that convincing, especially coming off of how the Jags looked last night. But I think that, you know, nine wins feels like it's realistic to me. But it's certainly not a given. And I think that nine is the minimum that you're going to need to make the AFC playoffs this year. Initially coming into this year, I think that I predicted that the ten seed that, that the seven seed would have ten wins. So it's an uphill battle, absolutely, for Cincinnati. I do think that they're going to be in the hunt here, but you know, their schedule isn't exactly, you know, forgiving moving forwards here where they are at Carolina this upcoming week have a little bit of an Andy Dalton revenge game on our hands here shortly like we just talked about the defense hasn't exactly proven that they can stop much of anything so we'll see after Carolina somehow turn their offense into a buzzsaw this past week will be really interesting there you are at home against the Ravens, and at that point, feels like it's getting close to do or die time because you're looking at potentially a one and four record if you end up dropping that one. And you are at the Giants, at the Browns, at home against the Eagles. It's it's a difficult schedule ahead of them, and I feel like realistically, we're talking about you know their bye week is week twelve. At that point, I think they have to probably be five and six to have a realistic chance at the playoffs. I believe that's where the Bills were at was five and six when they sort of turned their season around and they ended up making the two seed in the AFC. I don't think that that's going to be necessary for the Bengals that, you know, or it's even, it's not even really in the cards here for the Bengals to be a two seed and to win the division. This is just about making it to the dance and letting Joe Burrow at least have a chance to sort of carry you the distance that I would say five and six, no worse than four and seven. And even then you're talking about a pretty touch tough stretch to finish the season there as well. So as of this moment, I mean, the Bengals are, I know, on DraftKings favored to miss the playoffs as opposed to making it. I feel like I have an obligation to die on this hill that I do believe the Bengals are legitimately good and they are capable of winning nine games, but they're not making it easy right now, that's for sure. So let me know in the comment section where you are at in terms of Bengals panic as we are going to look at Cincinnati and some of the other teams that lost, including last night, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who just got absolutely pummeled by the Buffalo Bills and are off to a disastrous start after signing Trevor Lawrence to a big time contract extension in this past offseason. So we are going to dive into that game as well. But before we do so, we have to take a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 